Hey there, Internet. Today, I'm going to show you the first turns of my fourth axis that I just built. So, this thing is based on a Harmonic Drive HD Systems CP14 uh, F099A-SP, blah, blah, blah. Essentially, what this means is this has a flange on the front, the f the F099A, that essentially says it's a flange. The 14A is the size, general size. The 21 is the reduction. So this is a uh, planetary gear reduction with, I think, it, I think the specs are like three arc minute backlash, something like that. And I've got that hooked up to a IHSV57 servo and um, tr driven with a, H, uh, a, a HTD3 uh, belt. So this gives me a 21 to 1 reduction, and then I have a 20 tooth uh, on the servo and a 30 tooth uh, as the input to the gear. So if I run this thing, I'll go ahead and run it around one revolution. Uh, it needs a little bit more belt tension, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. But I, what I want to show you is uh, I'm going to try to make sure this thing can't turn with all my might. We'll see what happens here. Couldn't stop it, I'll tell you that. So I'm hopeful um, that this is rigid enough to do some machining on. So the next thing that I need to do is take this bench set up here and uh, take it out to the mill and uh, hook it up and drive it with some some power and, and do some cutting on it so we'll uh we'll head out to the garage and and uh see what we can do as far as making chips i'm out in the garage got the thing on the vise got a couple toe clamps on there I have some holes for clamps. I got to widen them out. Um, just another thing on the to-do list. But the first test here, uh, I'm just going to uh, make a cut on a piece of Delrin, and uh, no no controller setup. Uh, I just want to see how rigid it is. Um, I made actually the uh, f the mounting flange inside of here. Um, I did cut on the mill after I mounted this, just to make it really concentric. Um, and if I, I was able to hand turn it, but, um, actually I might want to power the motor on. Hmm. I might want to power the motor on just so that, um, the holding torque is there. So let me, um, let me get the, the power hooked up and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Um, so I just I want to demonstrate actually how quiet this servo is. So I did some tuning of the parameters, and um, this is a small jog. Uh, I mean I, I can't even hear it. Um, pretty amazing. Now I'm going to do a full jog. G ninety uh, G zero one F ten thousand. That's my max. Uh, G91 X315. So this should be one full revolution. So that's max speed, one full revolution. So we will um, we'll give it, I guess, ten revolutions. We'll start start the cutter, give it ten revolutions, and feed it in at a slower feed rate. Well, we'll just have to mess around. So. Okay, so I'm going to do half that speed, and here we go.
Not much vibration. It feels pretty solid. Two millimeters. Vibrating, but that's the um, that's the the head, not really. Maybe I should lock that down. All right, look at this now locked. This cable's vibrating. Let's steady this up a bit. Looks great. Um, go ahead and stop it. Okay, so now I am going to just put a 10 sided shape on here. Let's see how this works for just kind of general positioning. Bring the spindle up a little bit. All right. Do a full width cut, mostly. All right. So first cut, here we go. Come on, spindle. Second cut. Yeah, that's probably nauseating to look at. The, uh, the way this camera's mounted, it's got kind of amplifying any vibration. Alright, that should be it. This should be back where we position one. No cut. Perfect. Alright, well sorry about the uh the vibration there. Turn the uh brightness down a little bit. It's white Delrin, maybe the worst possible choice for this. Um but I would say it looks pretty good. So, I think this is a success so far. Now, um, I'll just kind of zoom out a little bit to show you my my setup. And I got a couple problems here. The, 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 the first problem is, I would have done this test on aluminum because I definitely think it can handle it, but I, I, all this is exposed. And one little chip, and believe me, that's going to happen, um, one little chip gets in there and good night um, controller. 
So I have to I have to make some kind of enclosure for this, and um, you know I think I'm going to use the, the. It's actually pretty convenient that I figured this out. I'm going to use my my power my Mills power feed power supply, which is a mean well rated at five amps, and it should be able to drive this thing fine. And I can actually uh, use the same power supply for my um, for my lathe. So I think I'm just going to. Um, I'm going to hook this thing up to, to all three and put a switch on it so that I can kind of turn any of the devices on. Or, so I think that's, that solves me power supply complexity somewhat, but I have to make a cover for this and, um, it's gotta be chip proof. Um, I also, uh, I'm not likely going to use this, uh, board. This is the ESP32 driver board from Bart Dring. Um, this is the, the old version. This is two years old now. It's um, version 2.1. But I can use an ESP32, and I only need a few pins. I, you know, you can see right here I only need a couple pins. So I think what I want to do, I'm going to want to be able to mount this on my CNC mill. So I'm going to make the right connectors for step, dir, and ground, three-pin connectors. And then I'll make a little module that I can put on here with a nice chip-proof cover. And um, the nice thing about this is instead of having this USB cable hanging off of here, I'll actually be able to drive it uh, and, and send a G code uh, over Bluetooth, um, which is going to be really nice. And I'll just plug, I'll plug an ESP32 module in when I want to use it, for example, here, or I'm going to be doing some grinding stuff with it. And then when I take it over to the CNC mill, um, then I can just plug it directly into the, uh, the CNC controller as a fourth axis. But I have to make it chip proof. Um, I probably need to put something, a cover on the belt to make sure chips aren't going to get fouled into the belt. I don't really know how I'm going to do that quite yet. But I think everything else has been a success. Uh, one other thing I have to, I have to remake this, this motor mount plate. Um, I've got it magnetically attached to this. Um, but I'm just holding it on here with this, uh, this clamp. Um, this is 19 inch uh, 1018 steel. Uh, this is the same stock. This is also 19 inch 1018 steel. And so this is going to be really, really robust. I have to make a few adjustments. Like for instance, this isn't, this is about um, 0 0.05 millimeters out of concentricity. Um, so I want to be able to make this, this ER32 chuck plate uh, adjustable and and I think I can do that by by putting a couple set screws in here and what I might do is um, to have something hard to register them against just uh, make make a little receiver holes and uh, press fit them into this um, this back plate so I have a bunch of stuff to do um, the next thing I'm going to be testing once I get a few of the other bugs worked out is uh, and, and, and get this thing enclosed because it, it not only has to be chip proof, I want it to be mostly grinder dust proof. I'm going to do some grinding stuff. So anyway, that's my progress. Uh, I'll probably do a full tear down and reassembly video on this because I have to, um, I have to take it apart and, and get some Loctite on, on some of the fasteners anyway. So I might as well just walk through the construction for anybody who's interested. If you are interested, uh, leave me a comment down below and thanks for watching.